All right, welcome to Limbering Up Drupal 8. Uh, first of all, if you are here by any chance for um, where, is my where's my, where are my margins and why don't I drive a Tesla, there was a mix up with the rooms and that presentation is taking place in 280 to 281. So if you do have to leave, we won't be offended. But if you're here for Limbering Up Drupal 8, today we're gonna be talking about uh, making your content admins lives easier with flexible layouts, WYSIWYG templates and more. So this is an update to a session we previously presented in 2015 uh, for uh, Drupal 7. And now that Drupal 8 is out and is pretty stable, we're updating it to talk about how you can accomplish it in Drupal 8 now with the options we have available, as well as how things have changed between Drupal 7 and Drupal 8. So first, I'm a cat cool. I'm the director of technology at a design and development firm in DC, formerly known as Rock Creek and now known as Chief. And I'm Clay Marshall. I'm a senior technical consultant for Chief, but also the managing director of a company in Portland, Oregon named Trestle Media. So what we found in our years of doing Drupal development is that the key to winning over your content admins and therefore your clients is finding out what they do often and then making it as easy as possible. We've been doing Drupal since about 2006. We started in the dark ages with Drupal 4 and have been doing it ever since. And what has stayed pretty constant as Drupal has changed is that content admins want to be able to do their job simply and they don't want to have to think about the development. So uh, it's very easy to make uh, make this a straightforward experience if you have, for example, just a body field and a few fields, but we're usually working on really complex systems that have diverse content. So you have a need for a featured article to look very different from a responsive, uh, from a regular article, and if you don't offer them flexibility, they're gonna see your system as an hindrance to getting their content online rather than as a tool to help them do it. So in the past, we've needed to uh, handle a lot of layouts. We, it's really easy to be tempted to do that with a lot of content types. So you have one content type for an article, another for one with a two column header, another content type if you wanna throw a video up at the top. And this gets pretty unwieldy pretty quickly. First, it's annoying for content admins to have to figure out what content types to use. And secondly, uh, there's still a lot of rigidity with what you can put where. You're not truly making it flexible, you're just giving a lot of really predefined, restricted options. The second way that people often try to make Drupal more flexible uh, is by telling their admins, well, you can always go to the source view and you can control things there. And it should be pretty self-explanatory why this is a terrible idea, uh, just by looking at, uh, at this mess. Even if you are a developer, you have no code hinting to help you out and telling your content admins they need to know HTML and CSS is a surefire way to make them hate you. So what we wanna do is to simplify choosing layouts adding media to our articles when we need to, and adding pre-formatted content snippets so people can be flexible without just being completely visually inconsistent and turning to code per node to accomplish uh, their styling. And finally, we wanna talk at the end a little bit about our approach to managing content and how having some empathy for our content admins has sharpened our development process and led us to creating um, more options for them. The goal of all this is to build a system that lets your content admins be contextual. They are thinking about the content, they are not thinking about the development. So if the development you're doing restricts what they're able to perform, then you're gonna be setting yourself up for inherent tension between your system and their goals. Back when we presented this in 2015, this was our only goal for the presentation, but now we have a bonus goal, which is making it work in Drupal 8. So um, within Drupal 7, we had worked for years, obviously trying to find an appropriate way to do this and make things easier for content admins. Um, when we said we want to do this talk at this time, you know, of course the great push is we want to do this and show some relevance in Drupal 8 and where we're going with this. Um, that's a lot of challenges. I mean, we're working a lot of times, as you all have known and seen all week, I'm sure, um, with modules that haven't quite reached a level of maturity that we need. We're using lots of dev status of modules, even in, a case, in one case, a pre-dev status, thing, something that hasn't been released essentially out of a sandbox to try to accomplish the same things that we did in Drupal 7 in Drupal 8. Um, so our disclaimer here is that this and our approach we believe is straightforward and correct. It's going to continue to evolve how you do this over the next days, weeks, months, as it goes along as these um, individual modules mature and as we have even more defined uses for media and the way we use it in Drupal. So the question is, you know, how do we create initially flexible layouts um, for Drupal when sometimes, you know, we need something that's, as Kat was saying, that's just a, a regular article and sometimes we need things that are more like a feature-based article and we have some examples here of what we're talking about.
So we're going to start out by showing you some examples from the New York Times. I have to tell you, sadly, a, a chief did not develop NewYorkTimes.com, but we're going to use it as an example anyway because they have a really good use of content here. So this is an example of a regular article on the, the Times Insider site. You can see that they, they're making good use of media. They have these large header images. But the point of this page is to capture you and to propel you not only here, but also into other sections of the, the site. So when you are working on these articles, you don't often want them to be an island. You want them to be an entry point so that you can experience that content elsewhere as well. So here at the top, we've got related content. Uh, in the right-hand sidebar, we've got related content. We've got information about Times Insider itself alongside a good use of graphics. And, um, you know, shareability here. And if you scroll down even further, you can see that they're even using a video. The video is perfectly usable, perfectly playable, but it's not a very immersive experience. On the other hand, they also have big featured articles that take over the experience completely. So here, that image gets dramatically bigger. And the part of the reason why it's able to do that is that we blow away the distractions. Rather than having related content everywhere, as you scroll down, you see that it's just uh, just text, really, you're experiencing this and nothing else, which, as you're thinking about the UX and the design for your site, is worth thinking about whether you have areas where this needs to be accomplished. Are you trying to capture them and drive them elsewhere, or are you trying to retain their information throughout a long uh, featured piece? So here, as we scroll down, we're starting the playback of that uh, video. And then we're continuing to see another really large uh, contextual image in the content. And if our Wi-Fi was working a bit faster, you'd also see a giant ad. So there's that. Uh, here on the right, we do have some related content, but it's very contextual and very intended to bring you along in the series. So in Drupal, we can also recreate this, and we're going to show you an example of it before we start showing you how we did it. So within this case, um, we have essentially the same approach. You know, we're using um, appropriately a Mardi Gras Indian here. Um, for a display of a large feature image, we have the same sort of structured um, content where we want to have you know, a clear focus of the article we're trying to display here. We're going to be embedding things like audio files, embedding videos inside. I'm giving you some structured, like separate kind of layouts that we have to give a little more interest in the article, embedding media in the sidebar. Um, and it's, uh, along with these particular items, also nested little WYSIWYG HTML templates in the sidebar. So the way that we did this initially is like describing, you know, we obviously want to have a way that we have an article that we can create and have that article exist in a couple different states. Um, we want it to be able to at times um, exist as a regular article with the same way without much work putting in that sort of blown out featured display. Um, so the way we're doing that initially is we're handling those layout changes through panels. Um, we're basically defining custom layouts for them in code. We're creating variants um, that use those layouts and define those layouts. Um, and then we use selection rules about when we want to activate those layouts depending on the content item we're looking in its context of the website. So in Drupal 7, we did this very similar to the way we're doing Drupal 8. Obviously, we used panels in the, in, in the panels UI that came within that. Um, and we used Page Manager, which is part of CTools at the time, um, to actually use as another UI to be able to create panels, parent panel variants, and selection rules for them. In Drupal 8, same tools, essentially, just they're all a little bit different now. We have panels without a UI, just the panels API. We have the layout plugin that helps us instantiate and, and create code-based forms of layout that then get pulled into the site. We just define them in our theme. And then we use the page manager. It's no longer part of C tools. It's been pulled out in its own contrib module. And on the first site where we were uh, using panels here, I went in to uh, try and add a panel structure in Drupal 8, and I thought that the UI just had not caught up at all. The reason for that is, as Clay mentioned, um, before Page Manager was part of C Tools and was very universal, and now it's broken out into its own module. So be prepared as you're doing this to go find all three of these independently and then line them up in order to get the experience that you're used to. So what you're seeing here is actually a YAML file um, that is used within the theme. And this is what's defining the layouts that we use. And you see here an example here. We've got an article with a sidebar um, that has, it belongs in the category of article. Because these layouts will show up whether you're using panels and page manager or whether you're using display suite. They become available throughout the whole system. So when we create something, we give it a category. So when it shows up in that list, you can define that, oh, these are my article ones. And then within those, we can then define, OK, where do they exist? And so we put them in our theme file and a layout slash article. And we can attach separate CSS. We define a machine name for this template itself. And we define regions the same way we always define regions in a theme before. We're just going to say, oh, look, these, these exist. Here's what they're called. And this is what creates and records that layout within the system. 
if we look at what was that, let me go back one actually, in this path where we've got the path to the layout slash article, that's where it's going to look for the twig file that's actually going to say how do we draw this out. When, we, when you call me and you want me this is this actual layout, what does that structure look like? And when we look at here what an article sidebar HTML twig file looks like, it's pretty basic. It's a bunch of divs, just wrappers holding things and we have these nice little twig statements just in pulling in, okay, I want the content primary here and I want the region for content sidebar here. And that's all we're doing with structuring a, a twig file for its layout. You'll see in the next one we've got the article sidebar header and the only difference here is that we're going to put a, a hero region on top of these two sidebars. So we can have that hero stretch across and have a sidebar and a right column right there underneath of it. And lastly is the feature where we're just forgetting everything. I just want a hero and I want my content and everything unique I'm going to do within my content in the WYSIWYG itself. So then we get into the UI uh, part that we do in Drupal. Here under page manager, we have the node view, um, the node view page, and this renders every request for a node page, as you can see at the path up there. Node slash one, two, three is gonna take you here. So because we don't want the same layout for every single node, we define variants. And these variants are based off a field that we're gonna show you in a moment in the back end. Article is feature, article is feature with video, image, and sidebar and header. So this is defining what our options are. And then we define selection conditions that say when each of them are going to be activated. So here you can see that um, we're activating it anytime it's article slash feature and anytime the node bundle is article. And uh, back in the day, you used to be able to define this based on fields in Drupal 7. So rather than having to say what path you could find that, you would simply say, show this to me anytime this field value is article with feature. That hasn't caught up with Drupal 8 yet, but you can do a workaround based on path. So we're combining path auto uh, to put a token from that field into the URL and render it that way. It's still very flexible, and as long as you have the redirect module, uh, updating those paths later is no big deal. Finally, you're gonna say now that this uh, selection rule is active and we're showing this particular page, uh, what do we wanna do with it? So here, you can see that in that header hero image, we're rendering a view block to show that big hero outside the content area. And then at the bottom, we're still showing the typical um, entity view content, which is what you see everywhere. That is your content area in Drupal 8. Replaces that main system block in Drupal 7. So for our first demo, um, we're going to demo just essentially creating a basic article. Um, and I have content already created for that. Um, so if we look at here, I've created an article and I'm just going to edit it quickly. And you'll see it's constructed as familiar as you're all with Drupal. It has a title. It has, in this case, the, the layout type where I decided I want an article with a sidebar. I've attached a large uh, image for a top that can be used in either cases, whether in the content itself or as a hero image. Um, and then we have just regular text underneath of it. I've given it a category here just because I want a taxonomy term so I can find a relationship, so I can have some related items. And when we save this item, you'll see that its layout, as you saw before, is the image that's in place that we uploaded. So that's still using the regular image um, field that we have there. We know that we want an image in this article type. It's always going to be in the header there. We've defined that. Um, we have here the main article side, and we just have related content that shows in the sidebar. Now, the thing is that perhaps, in, this came from an actual use case of a client of ours that actually took content and moved it through its site depending on what it was. So they create the first item and it may be that, okay, this is my feature article week, so I want to create a feature view of this. But later on, it would turn into a regular article and fall into the flow of a display like this. So what we had to do in that case is actually we just edit the layout here. In this particular case, I'm going to add an additional image here. And the reason is because in this case, I want to simply be able to give admins the ability to create a carousel if they want to. So if you just add more than one, we're going to get a carousel from it. And then you change its layout to feature. And we save it. And we'll see that our experience changes instead to this large feature display um, where everything is here in the main column with the focus content, just like Kat talked about in the New York Times article. We have a, in here a carousel display um, that gets put on just from adding an additional image. And this is just our carousel. We're just in basically this view, if it has multiple images, we'll pull an our carousel and we'll give you the carousel controls you need at that time. And then we have just the regular content layout here. And we have this guy at the bottom who, for some reason, I don't know, I think that there's one guy at Wikipedia and it looks like that. But um, as we build this in this demo out, we're going to show you, we're going to add more items to this. It's going to build it out more like the New York Times article, but that's how we actually are able to switch 
pretty simply between the different layouts. If I go back and edit again, and I say that, you know, okay, this has changed its, its purpose here. It's actually now going to fall into some sort of medium state where it actually needs to be, I want to have its carousel still. I want it to be prominent, but not that prominent. We can do things where we change it to sidebar with header and save it again. And we get the header at the top and we get the sidebar on the side. So it's just another option to provide people for a layout. These are very simple examples of layout changes. You can do a lot more. You could add anything you want in the sidebar blocks of here, but we're trying to give you just clear structured examples of how this could work. Um, the other example we have is when we look at um, the actual uh, example of a video. We also, if you looked at when I edited this field, actually let me edit because I want to change this back to a feature. I have the option here to add a hero video. And that example can be found, um, not there. Sorry, I lost my titles. Um, where if we add a video, I just have a, the view here saying basically, look, show me the carousel view if it's only images. If you have a video file in here, then render this view instead. And so in this case, we have here just a standard background, but because it's layout changed, it has a class that's been added to it. So I can also then do things with the H1 and say this isn't a class of a different display. I want to show the H1 like this. And I have a subhead in this case. I want to show it that way also. So just got to put this back to feature. So now we've talked a bit about making the layouts more flexible, but we want to talk about adding media to it. Step one is making it so that it can move around, and step two is making it so you can put something interesting there when it does. So uh, when you talk to people about adding media and you're talking to a developer, you're often going to get the response that you can add a simple image field at the top of the content type. And I would be lying if I said that I hadn't said this before back when I was a developer. So here, uh, we have that image field, but the trouble is that that image field can only render above the body. And if you're telling your content admins that this is the only way they can work with images, eventually they're going to come and say, well, right, but now I need to put it after the second paragraph. How do I do that? And you're going to have to explain to them that you didn't think about or care about that particular use case. So talking to them up front about the kind of media they want to use and the way they want to use it will go a long way. Whether they need to embed images in the body, that's a legitimate question to pose, but we believe you should assume that they do because we are doing content management systems after all, and images are content. So what we talk to them about is, do you also need video? Do you also need audio? It's very tempting to look at the last 20 blog posts and say, well, you've never used a video or audio in all that time, so we have no reason to think that it should be part of our user stories. But if you have the conversation early, then you can add that to your user stories and make time to test out the audio and video as well. Uh, the second thing we've found is really important with clients is educating them about retina and why it matters. It's for some clients, they're already ahead of the curve and the content admins already know about this. But for many of them, they're uh, redesigning a site that might be quite old and might be from before the time when retina became very popular. And this constraint of needing to upload images that are twice as large as they actually are going to display can be very unfamiliar to them. So we can build it so that automatically things become responsive and friendly, but in order to do that, we have to be uploading a very large image that's one and a half or two, si two times as big as we need it to be. And if you have a big design that is a 1,600 pixel wide image, uh, it's a very good idea to explain to them that this means they have to provide you something that's 3,200 pixels. And if they can't support that, then your design is going to need to be altered. But hopefully they can, and we're going to talk about how to achieve that. So in Drupal 7, when we gave the talk, we recommended just embedding everything, audio, video, and images through the media module for two reasons. One, uh, embedding images through CK Editor is pretty painful, or was in Drupal 7. And secondly, media had gotten to a state where it was really mature. Uh, media still had some bugs to work out, but it was in a pretty good spot. And we used a combination of these modules to accomplish our goal. Um, we did file uploads through file entity, embedding through media, obviously, and then responsive images through breakpoint and picture. Finally, if we needed video, we hooked up media YouTube or media Vimeo or media Brightcove or Ustream or what have you. And every one of those uh, modules was a separate module. And all of it was contrib. Uh, unfortunately, there is no media for Drupal 8, not yet. And if you were at the keynote, you may have heard Dries talking about uh, some of the initiatives to improve media in Drupal 8, but we're not quite there yet, and media is, uh, is still catching up. 
So for right now, we have another um, cocktail of ways to do it in Drupal 8. First, uh, you can embed captioned images through the WYSIWYG, which is a huge step forward we'll demonstrate in a moment, and that's just out-of-the-box functionality. The drawback is that they are not retina-friendly. So if you upload something that is 3,200 pixels wide, uh, you're going to get something that's 3,200 pixels wide no matter what kind of device you're viewing it on. And if you upload something that's only good for desktop, then obviously it's not going to play very nice with retina. Uh, also, you can't add any extra fields. So if you need to add a caption or a credit, um, if you need to make the credit field required, for example, to encourage the admins to do that, you can't do that through the solution. So in Drupal 8, we're using very similar approaches. It's just some of the things have changed that we we're doing. We still rely on file entity to make files fieldable. Um, we still want to add custom fields to it, even though the in custom, what WYSIWYG does right now with CK Editor, it allows you to add a caption field, and that caption field shows up everywhere. We still have the approach, and this came from some of our clients we were working with also, that had even you know, people that were just in, in, all they did was manage media for the site, so they would upload the file. It was their job to make sure a credit was attached, that it had the proper caption, that it had all the proper references to it, and it was managed as a separate content item. So we have custom fields that we add that way. We embed them through the entity embed module at this point. Um, we were using media for this before, um, but the entity embed is the way we actually were doing it before um, media, when, we, when it was node embed. Um, it's the same thing. We're taking an entity item, we're using that to embed in the WYSIWYG editor. Um, responsive images, you know, luckily and, and thankfully, this is all built into core now, and from what I've seen, it works really well in core. Um, the defining the breakpoints uh, within the YAML file works great, and the responsive image module, it seems a little simpler than it was before using our combination of modules, so it's worked pretty well. Um, lastly, we're embedding videos using the video embed field, um, mainly because this has a video embed WYSIWYG uh, mo sub-module with it. Um, that has worked pretty well, and it loads them in as responsive video players at the, at the time that it loads that way. So um, the, we have a link here to a uh, discussion um, on Drupal.org. Um, ideally, when you took, used the built-in CK editor functions, you would be able to place a WYSIWYG image and it would be responsive, that it would know what it needs to do. There's a lot of conversation in this thread about how they can do that. They talked about earlier on moving into 8.2 to try to do it. I had, didn't look again today, but as of yesterday, there was comments that were showing up in there as well as 15 hours ago, that they were still talking about this, how to get this done. Right now, you can't do it in the CK Editor tool. It's not going to load in a responsive image. So it may be fine for most use cases. But if you know you need to have a responsive image in the, in the WYSIWYG, this is not going to do it. So we have an example here. Um, same one we saw before of where, what we've shown before, we have these uh, items placed in here. This is uh, an image here that's been uploaded as a file. It has its credit at the bottom, its, cap, or its credit on the side, its caption on the bottom. Um, and it's embedded uh, into the site that way, along with a video file here. And this is an audio embed that's been put in there using a standard audio HTML5 player. So the way we're embedding the images, as I started to say earlier, we're configuring Entity Embed to, to place the images. Um, we basically, Entity Embed module allows you to create separate embed buttons for what you need. So we create one. We say the only kind item we want here is a file of image type. Um, and we use that to place the images. The breakpoints have says, said have all been defined in the YAML file um, within your theme, which is an appropriate place for it, and it's been a pretty straightforward way to lay out uh, what your breakpoints would be. We create image styles the way we always have, at least um, for the past five years for me. Um, we define them as we need to, not only for the way they are matching the design, but also we set 1x and 2x multipliers for them to make sure we have retina-friendly images. Um, and lastly, to make an image responsive, in our example here, uh, I had to create a pre-process function that basically when an image is inside of an entity embed item, uh, we're basically getting in the way and pre-processing and rewriting that image as responsive for us. Um, I'll show you a snippet of code that we're using, but essentially we're just saying don't render that image the way you want to. Here, pre-process rendered as a responsive image. So here you can see uh, when you configure entity embed how this renders in the UI. It's found under a configuration, content authoring, text editor, embed buttons. And as Clay mentioned, you can set this up to have uh, as many embed buttons as you want. Here we have one for audio and one for image embed because video gets its own unique functionality. When you go in there, you can configure uh, what types of entities it has available to it, as well as what content types it can be used on. 
Then we're going into this breakpoints YAML file um, in a big, big divergence from Drupal 7. Previously, you uh, defined what the breakpoint was in the theme, but what multipliers it had and some other configuration got done in the UI. And now with YAML um, handling most of the config in Drupal 8, you don't have to do quite as many steps here. And for more information on breakpoints in particular, there was already a talk here this week that can be found online once those are posted, and there's some documentation uh, here on breakpoint to go a little bit deeper. Now, with the breakpoints defined, uh, we go in, we define the image styles, and then we define uh, what Drupal 8 calls responsive image styles and what Drupal 7 called picture mapping. So here we're saying that for the WYSIWYG large responsive image style, we want to render the max 1200 by 600 image style uh, for 1x and then the one that's twice that for uh, the 2x. So once this is configured, uh, as long as you upload something big enough, it will be responsive automatically. And here, uh, in core, the whole reason why responsive images and breakpoints coming into core is so exciting is that for these fields on content types, it handles it very well out of the box. You just pick your responsive image style and you're done. But for uh, the file entity, as Clay alluded to a moment ago, it doesn't have that responsive image option available. Instead, uh, it only has file image. So that's why we're having to grab that and render it using this code right here to make that a little bit more adaptive across the screen sizes. Yeah, and so, as I mentioned before, the, the code here essentially is checking it's a valid image. Um, and essentially, we're just using an image build function here to, to say, basically make this a responsive image, use a responsive theme for it. Uh, WYSIWYG float is a responsive image ID I want to use with it. And then I'm just using the, the URI as we're doing a preprocess field option to actually determine which image needs to be responsive, and then it's rendering that way. So our demo, once again, we'll go back to our big article here. Um, the first thing I'll show you is just the standard WYSIWYG functionality. Um, so when we're looking here, we have the option here, the standard WYSIWYG button. We basically are going to choose our file. It's great that we have alternative text here that's actually required, forcing us to do this for accessibility, which we often forget about. Um, and then we have the option to say we want a caption. And we save this item. And we get a spotlight. And then you just have the option here to ed edit your caption. You can just choose whatever your caption here uh, needs to be, so jazz. And save it. And we have just standard embed. It works fine. In most cases, I think that this will be a great improvement of what most people had to do to get a caption and image before. Um, so we're really happy with the way this goes. I think that if they can expand this and get in the responsive images and find other ways to add other fields to it, it it'd be ideal. Um, because of our requirements for what we had, though, we had some different options where we want to embed an image instead with all that formatting involved. So if we go expand our WYSIWYG, and go a bit further down the page, we can embed using our embed button here. So this is a custom embed button I made. And all we're going to do is look for an image. Embed, and we're going to choose it. This is all display suite, so with image, any kind of file, we're just adding a display suite option to add the fields we want to have included with that. We're choosing a display suite mode of uh, WYSIWYG float left. Um, let's give it another alt text. Um, these are fields that continue to appear, but we're not rendering them here. We're using basically the view mode and the style that's wrapped around it to add our CSS to position it correctly. We embed that item, and it comes in line. Um, puts its caption where we wanted it, has the credit where it was. It's pretty close to display on the front end. It's a little bit different. Um, the CK editor can use, it's always been able to use custom CSS in it. Um, it's a bit easier, I think, now. You can define it in the theme itself, just which CSS you want CK editor to use. So in this case, I'm loading in saying, just use style CSS, and then I have another CK editor file that's overriding some of the things that look different to see in the WYSIWYG. Um, and then saving this item here. You'll see that it's rendered float left, has its credit nicely showing now, looking a little better um, with its caption underneath of it. If we want to actually edit and add in audio and video, I have separate embeds for that. Um, so if we add position here where we want to add an audio file, In this case, we're just going to float it left. We're going to use the controls here for this one. And that gets positioned. And then if we want to add a video file, we're 
we're quite filling this up. It's a little bit difficult to get it all to fit sometimes. Um, basically, same thing with YouTube and media YouTube or media Vimo, just using the path to the file itself. Um, we don't want to play. We use responsive video. You'll see it gets placed. Um, it's showing an approximate positioning. It has a caption at the bottom that does not render. It's sort of just helping you along in the WYSIWYG, showing you what you have there. Um, and then if we save this item, you'll see that those items rendered, you know, as we expected with the video in place, audio file there, playing, and we have, that's how we're embedding all those separate items. The one thing I will say with media is that these were all one thing. You know, with media, I was able to define and style and apply display suite options to all these things. So essentially, you would have just one embed button. You just pick what you wanted to do. Um, I know that there's some sort of trying to consensus about how we want to handle media in Drupal. I think it's going to be really important that the, as that moves forward that we get some sort of consensus soon because it's, as you see what we're doing here, we're using a bunch of different pieces to make it happen. But if we can get a, consent, a unified way we want to approach it, the same way we approach content types, I think that we'll be in much better shape with it. So with media coming in and the content templates predefined, occasionally there are gonna be little chunks of content that are important to show because you wanna maintain some visual consistency, but you don't want it all to be happening the exact same way every time. Again, we're going to our old friend, the New York Times, for a few examples of how this can be done well. So here we have a really basic, just a block quote style with a little bit of bolding thrown onto it, but occasionally we make it more complex. And here we've got a header coming in as well as some stylized text and a link and then here we're blowing it out because that quote is really important to the context of the article and deserves a lot of extra impact and attention. And finally, we have um, my favorite graphic on Trump destroying America uh, with a little graphic and then a link. So again, people are able to embed small graphics but not able to, um, um, able to make that really contextual within it. So for all four of these options, the essential thing we want to do is make sure that we are in control of what kind of pre-formatted content chunks admins can apply, but then we give them the freedom to do that wherever and however they want to do it. So uh, we have relied on a module called WYSIWYG API template plugin to achieve this. And it's been really handy whenever a client uh, knows, for example, that they want to have some pre-structured content, but they know they need some flexibility within that. So uh, for example, we had one client who needed a list of publications and rather than doing fields in a field collection, we knew that they were sometimes going to have um, a few lines of the citation there and sometimes not. So we gave them a little bit more control over how that rendered and why. For Drupal 8, we have a pre-dev version it's pre-release and can be seen, um, can't be seen on the project page, but you can get into it. And because it is using such a light piece of functionality, this is one that we're pretty uh, comfortable using. But you do need to make sure that you grab this uh, CK Editor Content Templates plugin and upload it to your libraries folder first, because otherwise you can have some difficulties trying to work with this uh, module. And by difficulties, I mean it throws a giant error and doesn't do anything. So that, uh, the links to this will be up afterward, and you're welcome to grab the link from that if you ever do need it. So once this is done, we have this WYSIWYG templates option rendering here. Um, you can see that we've added a Google map option, a sidebar block, and a sidebar block slow load. And the slow load in particular adds a little uh, extra bit of style as you're scrolling down the page to make that feel like a more polished experience without having to have the admin actually go in and configure this every time because they're dropping in this predefined content that has the fade in class and has the div already placed for them. It takes a little bit off their plate so they don't have to remember how uh, the structure works every time. Okay, so we have a demonstration here of using uh, some of those templates and we'll find some room to add it into our article here. Um, so once again, editing the article. As we go into the WYSIWYG, you're going to see down here that there's this icon right here, and that's the WYSIWYG template icon. Um, so we can insert a template by clicking that, and the first one will insert just a regular sidebar content block. Um, so we click that and submit, and you see it puts it in line. Once again, picking up the styling that already exists, hopefully showing it, rendering in a way that looks appropriate for an editor to recognize that, that the item is there. I'm going to add one more item that's going to be that WYSIWYG float right. Um, our sidebar content slow load, so it's going to be on the right, and you, well, I, I, where is it? The thing is, it's sitting out here. Um, when we have things floating right, CK editor is accommodating for it. When they're floating left, it's not helping with that. So I let this sit out there, because it looks more, it's what I more would expect it to look like on the front end, so I let it sit out there on the side. Um, and then we just save this. Uh, 
and again, these items can be placed or styled to break out a little bit to give it a little more uh, interest there. And you'll see this when this pulls up. We've got a slow load on that item there. And you could literally target these and mark them along your story. As you're, as you're telling a longer feature article, create these separate sidebar items. Sometimes they can be maps. Sometimes they can be just little um, attached PDFs that relate to where you're in the content. And just target them along the side and have them load that way and build a pretty nice feature experience. We found that um, using the WYSIWYG templates approach has made it a lot easier for content admins to understand, even just with future training and governance, having those pre-formatted reduces the amount of um, strain that is placed on new people who have to edit content. So rather than telling them, remember, format it in exactly this way, use exactly this class, uh, the new, they can train them by saying, go use these kind of snippets and then customize the content within that, which makes it uh, a lot easier for them to move forward in that way. Um, I should show you just one other uh, idea what this looks like when it actually gets embedded. You know, unlike a, an entity item, which if you're used to embedding media at all, you know that um, it's a little bit unusual the way it writes in the content there for someone who's not a developer to understand what's happened there. Um, this is, uh, when these are embedded, it's for someone with simple HTML skills, even if they have to get in here again, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, what they're getting at in the side here is really just that block. Um, and it's just putting it in their form with the appropriate formatting. So if not careful and trying to delete it, they could break things, but you can always go back in and figure out where you are in the structure if you're into that, if you want to get into the HTML itself in there. So uh, the last thing we're going to talk about is making it easier to manage content uh, in general from a macro level. What we found with content admins is that uh, creating it is usually the first part of the process, but then managing it afterward, being able to edit it and interact with it also becomes very critical. And it's been a really nice improvement in Drupal 8 in terms of how they can go and sort through content in the content view. But right now, they're still only allowing title, type, and status. Uh, I mention this because, again, for content admins, finding this content afterward and being able to, to uh, see patterns in it becomes really critical. So right now, if we wanted to see, for example, how we're using a taxonomy term, you'd have to click into every single article. But if you wanted to just find a word in the body of the text, it's impossible to do that right now. You can find it in the title, but you can't find it in the body. So we had a client a while back who had um, some really varied content administrative needs, and they were used to using um, used to using Word docs on their computer a little bit more uh, to sort through it. So they were asking us, how can we just find um, the content that we want to be able to? So we wound up creating an interface like this, where we can search for uh, anywhere that the body is talking about jazz, but perhaps anywhere that the body is not talking about Dr. John. And we can narrow that down very rapidly, uh, because these two are exclusionary. The level of reaction with content administrators to doing work like this can be a, a little bit surprising if you haven't experienced it before, because it so, makes their jobs dramatically easier and it's only about five minutes of work for us. So similarly, you can look for anything that uh, you yourself have edited, uh, and it's just exposing more of that data that we know is in the back end and we know how to get at with views, but they often aren't very much aware of. So here, we take it a step farther, and we start creating contextual administrative views that are targeted to individual content types. We've been talking about the article content type up to this point, and we've been talking about some fields that are uh, really important to drive the experience, one of them being what the layout type is, and the other being what the tags are. So here, if I want to find um, every piece of featured content on the site, especially if I'm working on a large site that wants a relatively few features, uh, this is something that you can drill down to immediately and, um, and pull that up. And again, if you want to find anything tagged with an individual term, you can get at that as well. So we've had a really strong reaction to doing this work for content admins that has made it easier for them to use the system. So it's a technique that we share uh, fairly often. We're happy to take questions on that as well. So uh, the upshot of everything that we've been trying to do here is really making it easier for people to administer that content in ways that are organic and intuitive for them. As we've seen, Drupal 8 has had a lot of improvements, but it still has a pretty long way to go. So uh, we're promoting the sprints, of course, that are happening tomorrow. First time sprinter, the mentored course sprint, and the general sprints here on Friday. We definitely encourage people who want to be involved with making this a bit more user friendly to uh, go and, and join in those. So thank you all for coming. We're happy to take questions up at the microphone, and we appreciate your time. Sure, we can repeat. Uh, 
uh, questions modular data tables. You mean um, entering data within the WYSIWYG and making that a bit easier to work with? So we've done a couple different techniques for making them responsive. Um, the most common that we've done is adding in a JavaScript library to make it so that that can scroll from left to right. Um, I don't remember that offhand, but if you want to come up afterward, I can get the name of that for you. And um, the second one we've done is rendering the tables. Um, we had a, a library that would render the tables as divs. So uh, we prefer that one a little bit less because it's less accessible. Um, so typically we do have the scrolling left to right tables and there are some, um, uh, for example, with views, you can go through and define a view table template and um, have it fall back to uh, divs while it's rendered as tables for, uh, for people who are looking at it on a desktop version. Hey, I was wondering if there's any particular reason that you use panels instead of display suite. Um, I know they're not exactly the same, but there's a lot of overlap. And I've, in, in, on recent sites, I'm always told to use display suite and not use panels at all. Yeah, um, so the, the, probably the biggest disclaimer we could give about this whole presentation is that there are, I could tell you three other ways to do this. Um, the, what we liked about the panels and from the way we did before was exactly the page manager controls and the way we could set those variants very logically for us. Um, and because in the old form, we could actually say um, when you're selecting and you had the, the appropriate parameters, you could select a, 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 a selection criteria that was literally like, I'm going to create any field. And if this field has any value, switch it to that thing. Um, and so it's a little bit immature right now the way it's doing it, but that was the purpose of that. We are using display suite. Like every time we render uh, a separate entity item, it is a display suite layout that we're using there. Um, all we're doing is placing blocks using panels in that, in that structure there, but um, we use them both uh, together. Kat, I think we forgot mm -hmm. to mention at one point, when you do add an image, we are using those fields like wrapping a caption, we're using display suite to add custom classes to it when we need to. So it's a combination of both. I would add to that though, um, Display Suite is really useful when you're, um, when you're trying to choose what renders, uh, where something is positioned when it renders. This is making some if, uh, if else sort of statements. So for example, if we choose this, then we want to render uh, these fields and if not, the other way. So you can do that with view modes in Display Suite, but then you should be um, rendering that using a view. And if you want to render it directly on the page, then panels helps with that uh, if logic. Hi. Have you figured out a way in 8 to be able to not only insert the image into the content, but also be able to reuse that image as in a teaser view or something along those lines where it's templated out? I know in 7 I'm able to do this using the insert module where I can upload the image in a field and have all of the wonderful things that fields do and then mm -hmm. also be able to use that same image, upload once, use it multiple times within the body of, of the, the blog post or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if you found an eight solution yet for that. Well, so the approach we're doing here is trying to use files that way. Um, once again, we did this all the time in the media module where when you browse for media, you could upload a new media in there and create that necessary file entity. In this case, the approach saying, um, which is exactly one of our clients does, they have a media manager. That media manager just goes to content slash files and adds a new file, adds that file with its fields there and builds the library of images that are necessary at that time. And then we're embedding them through the WYSIWYG using the entity embed of that file itself. But yeah, that's it's not... Oh. If you were, ta I think oh, I sorry. know what you're talking about. You're talking about uploading the field to it and then having it render in the view, but also being able to control where it inserts, right? Yes. This solution can also do that. If you were to place an image field, for example, um, you could call it a uh, thumbnail or you'd, I think finding the semantic term for it would actually be the most difficult part. But once you have that image field, you set it not to render on the, the um, not to render in manage display, mm -hmm. but then you would set it to render in a view mode, for example. And then you'd use entity embed the way that we're demonstrating it here to insert it within the body. So it's being uploaded to that field, but then actually rendered using entity embed and then rendered elsewhere in view modes in that awesome. way. Did that Thank make you. sense? That makes yeah. perfect okay, sense. Okay, good. <laughs> Hi. Um, can you speak to any processes that you had? Um, in migrating from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8 with this suite of modules, like panels and? That's a big question. Yeah. <laughs> um, in this particular case, um, the instance here is not sort of migrating our old demo into that state, so we didn't actually do the steps of actually migrating a file from one to the other. Um, we have done, uh, well, can you give a better answer? I don't want to cut off your answer. Cut. <laughs> okay. Uh, I tend to say that usually, not just from going Drupal 7 to Drupal 8, but also 6 to 7, or even an old installation of 7 to a new installation of 7, um, typically when we're adding new features like this to make it dramatically easier going forward, we tend to migrate the old content more as is. 
So um, saying we're going to pull in the images as they were rendered in the body um, is, is a little bit more common. But I know with media, the whole point is if they're rendered with media, then that embed code is not going to be working quite as well. So I think that's going to continue to be a challenge for a while until that catches up. Um, frankly, if I were personally working on a migration, and I'll defer to you on this too, um, I'd wind up either trying to render um, a view to find everywhere that that um, uh, either a SQL query or a view to find everywhere that that old media embed code was used and then make it part of my governance process to go back and update that or task that out or trying to write a script at the point of migration to um, rewrite the old embed code as an actual actionable file. But either way, that's not easy and there's not an existing path for it that I'm aware of. Did that answer your question in a very terrible a way? Bit. Yeah, thank you. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I the, the managed file table is still there, so if we're talking about files themselves, they're going to exist in some format. I think the way as in which they're, if we're talking about in a WYSIWYG, the way they're embedded, if they're, mm -hmm. they're media files, and yes, that's going to be difficult to figure out what to do about this time, so we'll take that. But thank they you. should come across as files still. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, you're talking about rendering uh, content, uh, dynamic content based on taxonomy associations, correct? Yeah, so basically creating a sidebar block text mm -hmm. that article, but pulling in dynamic content rather than just Sure. Um, I'm going to restate that for the track and then turn it over to Clay to show how we did it here. But uh, he's asking specifically about um, if you are, you have content you want it to come in in a, in a related way rather than defining it in a sidebar WYSIWYG template, how do you have that view block and embed it in Drupal 8? Of course, we have an example. But so the, when, whenever we add an article, in the case of when we had this article set as a sidebar, the content in the side over there is using the relationship of the category, um, a taxonomy term there as a dynamic view that's placed. And what we just told in the page so this item of related content is finding these examples because they relate to music. And it's just using that taxonomy term as a contextual filter in that view and saying, if I've matched this term or any term, show me these items. And I also am saying, but exclude the note I'm on so I don't see a duplicate of it. So that placement here, this related content, is a view that's placed there. Now, when we place it there, we're using the panel to say it's there. So in this case, when we're switching this, that's always going to be there. If there's no results, it won't show. It's not as flexible as where in the WYSIWYG I can say exactly where I want that related content to be. We have to sort of struck, deal with, in this case, leave the structure of that. I'm sure there are solutions that we could figure out, but in this particular case, we're placing it by saying the panel in a structure I know I want related content to be, and I know it want, I want it to be here. And if, for example, um, so what, we're, what we were showing earlier with that panels page is showing what blocks render on what variants. So uh, both in our twig template and then in our panel variant, we're saying we don't want the second sidebar to, uh, to display here on the featured article at all, but we do want it to display here. So if you were to say, for example, that you wanted a, a feature experience, but you still want that related content, you'd want to add another region uh, maybe to the bottom of the page, where you could say, um, put my related content down here, but still keep that from being distracting um, on the right sidebar until you've gotten to the bottom. Okay. Uh, yeah, so right here, we're using um, a contextual filter of the taxonomy term ID. We also have another filter here, making sure that we never show a result for the page we're already on. And then down here, we're saying we only want to show five of them. And also, when you place these items within the page itself, when we look at the page layout, um, and here are our variants, and we edit the variant of with sidebar, you have an option when these are placed. So here's the item in the sidebar here. You have an option when you place these to override that also and say, look, in this case, in this variant, I want to set it to 10, 20, or 30. So, Wait, Do you have a follow-on to that? Well, so and um, everyone asked that. The, um, <laughs> so the, we have it right now set. And what we try to do, and what we try, as you can say, with the talk, we want admins not to think all that much if they don't have to. So we want to say, like, I want to find a relationship that's contextual based on what I just created. But in some cases, they need to actually say, okay, I need these three articles to go. In that case, we would put a separate field on that content type that's like an entity reference field, and we would allow them to pick 
those and possibly use Node Queue to actually order those or some other weight system to say where they belong. And then that view you would place on the side is like curated related content. And we would then have to show anything that's tied to that Node ID that's been chosen as curated content. Yeah, and to reduce the amount of them having to think like, okay, we don't want the two competing things, we don't want the related taxonomy solution and also the curated solution, you could have the condition on that view that's rendering the, um, the entity reference thing uh, be only if the entity reference value has been filled out and have the condition on the default taxonomy view be show this only if that um, has not been filled out. So in that way you have two different blocks but they would render the same way and the admin wouldn't have to think about it too much. Yeah, I, I agree, and I think that you know the one thing that I, Kat and I always go back and forth about is that um, I think that's absolutely right. We're trying to get the idea of like this is a conceptual approach to how to provide things for admins, and there's different solutions for how they do it. You know, I think that in some cases in the past, and we just um, built site not too long ago, where it just was best to have a content type called image, where we let people upload the image and do whatever they want. It comes completely controlled by man by display suite, and we're embedding just that content type. So while we're trying to limit that, we're just trying to make sure that we're thoughtful and it, it's approachable to that admin as to what they need to do, and it fits in their business case. And business cases change all the time, and that's what's great about Drupal, is we can keep adapting and people keep writing new things that help us make that easier. Um, but we want to try to get across the approach of what you can do and how to give content admins as much flexibility as possible without overwhelming them. Yeah, I think with paragraphs in particular, um, what I've seen with the paragraphs module, and admittedly I haven't used it in a, in a while, so it may be more mature, is that if you're migrating content, like if you're structuring your content in a Word doc and then migrating it, paragraphs is a huge pain. But um, if you are truly building your article in Drupal, then it's good. So that goes back to that use case, uh, doing the right thing for your admins, which is not universal. But I hear paragraphs has been getting pretty awesome lately. It's, it's a lot better, and, and actually a little plug for Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that's quite right for the script yet, but it's really interesting. Yeah. Because what I like about your approach is that you're keeping all of the content in a single field. So the content is then technically more portable yeah. and sort of more properly marked up than being separate pieces, with, which is the case with paragraphs. Cool. Um, I think that it, it, you know, if my instinct is always really try to just give people as few options, like, so I actually was fought for a long time about giving people this much control in a WYSIWYG. Like, you know, if, if I had my choice, I would just have, like, no WYSIWYG controls at all because it would come out exactly as the way I wanted it to. Um, but as it's just evolved over time and what people have been asked, I think obviously as these evolve, giving them that, you're right for portability, certainly. You know, but it's just, it's what they seem to need, and as long as we can give it to them in a way that's not damaging, it's helpful. Any other questions? Cool. Thank you all very much. Enjoy the rest of your conference.